So based on the, uh, the theme, uh, we have this design, and I hadn't seen this theme before. It looks nice. Uh, it definitely has more breathing room than the built-in one, so let's say we, I keep that one. Uh, we'll cover a couple more things, and then we'll go on to seeing the alternative, which is WooCommerce. I wanted to show everyone both of those plugins for you to decide which one you like better for your e-commerce. Before that, um, I want to mention a couple of things here. We'll go back to the dashboard. And uh, if you've noticed, uh, we've got the, the updates uh, pop up there. So go back to the dashboard and click on the plugin updates. We've had that lecture about plugins, so based on what we've talked about, we can make decisions here. So if you go back to plugins, uh, it's not telling me that there's a new WordPress, so that's fine. It's telling me that there's updates for plugins, but nothing for themes. So we have these possible plugin updates. One thing that it doesn't show here, that if we were to look at actual plugins screen, it also tells you that there's updates under plugins. And here it tells you, uh, really obviously, it tells you here under the WP Commerce, please back up your website before updating. Before updating, please back up your database and cloud in case anything goes wrong. It doesn't tell you that on the other update screen. It tells you that here. But even if it didn't tell you that, didn't I tell you that? We talked about that and said, when you're doing these updates, you should do backups. Now, it's not a big deal if we don't do a backup here because we've got this, the site saved from Tuesday and all of that. But make a note of that, that it's recommending for you to do a backup first. If I go back to the updates here, so this says duplicator, we've got 126, 128 is available, WP Commerce, we've got 312, 0, 312, 2 is available, Yoast 471, 478. Usually the number more to the left means how much more important the update is. If this was going from a 4, whatever, to a 5, whatever, it's a big update usually. That big whole number there means it's a big change. This is going from 4.7 to 4.8. That seems pretty big, relatively. This one's from 3.12.0 to 3.12.2, so it's probably a minor change. 1.26 to 1.28, that's another minor change, the third digit. So minor, minor update, minimum, you know, central update, maximum update. The bigger the number, the more of the change. What changed? This is when you look at the details. So view version details of Yoast. Again, these are often a little technical, but it says there's these bug fixes that have been added. There have been enhancements. Optimizes the way the cornerstone flag is saved. Analyzes the content using cornerstone ass assessors. 471 did this. 470 did that. Added transition words for Italian, etc. So more updates, enhancement, default PayPal credit to on, and ensure it is functional in our 1.0 theme engine. Following my lecture previously about these updates, remind me or give your opinion how should we proceed. One at a time, yes, and then in, and in order. So the most important one, most likely, is our is our commerce plugin. Our whole site really relies on that, so that's the one I might want to update first. So updates here, select it and do the update uh, if you want. Uh, I'm not I'm not gonna do it just because not necessary. It's a testing site, but it's pretty easy to do the update. I just want to bring that to your attention. There has been that update that has been popping up for a couple of days. You may have noticed. And notice some of these may take a little longer to update than others. That's why I'm not going to spend time to update them all. 
maybe shouldn't have clicked. But it's going to update it. Okay, it's done. That's it. I'm not going to update the other ones, but just make a note. Updates, you want to do them. Think about how you do them, when you do them. What if I was doing this in the middle of the day when people are buying my products? My site would have been in maintenance mode the time that it took to do the update. Um, let's look at, um, let's go back to plugins screen. I'll mention one more plugin at the moment that may be useful. Let's add a new plugin. And we'll search for advanced database. I want the one called Advanced Database Cleaner from Unis or Unis JFR. I'll put it in my notes. Plug another plugin recommendation. Use to clean up your database. I'll show you how it works. So go ahead and install it. The preview here is telling you Clean database by deleting unused data such as revisions drafts, drafts, and etc. So install it and then activate it. You get a new item here WordPress database cleaner. We have the free version, there's a paid version with more features, but the way this works is. This scans your site and sees that there are 10 revisions in your database, and there is one draft, and auto drafts and posts in the trash, in my case. I might have changed things differently from yours. But the point of this is the more that you use WordPress, you get revisions hanging around, you get drafts that you never finished, you get items in the trash that never delete themselves. So your site builds up stuff, which means it slows down your site. It takes up space on the database in the server. It slows down. Running this database cleaner once in a while helps clean up your site, speed up your site, but it has downsides. So we've got pros and cons. means old copies of files, speeds of site, cons, removes older versions of files. Maybe I wanted to go back to a version of an article from a month ago. Well, if I run this cleaner, it's only going to keep the last version the current live version and one version back, not the one from three versions ago. Removes older versions and could delete too much. Yes? Old version? No, that's the point of this, that uh, you're working on drafts of your files, your articles. You've, you've published it or made a change later, so now there's version 2, version 3. It's going to delete those old versions, except your current one and one back. Okay, that. 
Yeah, that's separate. That backup that you've made from a month ago is still complete from a month ago. You could, yeah. Yeah, that's the point where here then always back up your site. Before you do these clean spring cleanings, uh, make make these backups just in case. It's just that on the server we want it as lean as possible. You want to download those zips and save them somewhere else to come back to them in case. Always back up your site first before cleaning up. All right, so this is telling me that if I were to select all of these, it's going to clean up these things. I don't know exactly what a transient feed is, but it would it's something that's there. So these are things that it says these things could be cleaned up. It, after we do it, it tells you how much you save. So I, I won't do it just yet, but I would then select to apply. Yes? It says you have to get the pro version of the some of these items, yes. If I go to some of these other screens, you should be able to clean this one since it's the regular cleanup. But you know, if you if you cl click to see more detail, that's when it's going to tell you to get the pro version. So general cleanup, it's part of the free version. I haven't done it yet. We'll see in a moment. Under optimize again here, this tells me here are a few things that could be optimized in your in your database now. Unfortunately, it uses the weird like non-US version of using commas instead of dots. That's so weird to me. That should be a dot. 1.40. The comma usually in the US, that'd be like thousand in this place, right? So 1,400? No, it's 1.40k, not 1,400k. I don't know if there's a way to change that in the settings. But anyway, this is saying there's a little bit of like leftover data or unoptimized data or something in your database, which could also be optimized. Again, this is changing stuff deep in your database, and if you mess it up, you have to go back to that archive. Tables, um, you can't really do much here. It just tells you, okay, this is, this is stuff in your database. You have all of these options. Notice they don't put the commas here like it's supposed to be, but under options is 1,136 kilobytes, 2,000 rows of data, nothing in links. Uh, posts. This is stuff in my posts. It doesn't mean I've got 76 posts, but I've got stuff there. Here's the redirection plugin doing its thing. So there's data in the database that I cannot look at unless I get the pro version. You don't really need to look at your raw data of your database. But uh, here, conceivably, you could say, I want to select this piece of data in my database and delete it. That's very bad unless you know what you're doing. Unless you look in that row of data, what's there? Oh, it's all junk? Let me delete it. But I can't look into it until you get the pro version. You can schedule this to do it on its own once in a while, um, but you don't need to do that. Uh, I mean, you can't do that unless you have the premium version. So what you would do for this plugin, make a backup, and then I would select under the general cleanup to clean. You are about to clean some data. This operation is irreversible. Don't forget to make a backup first. So sure. So now all of that's been cleaned there. Under optimize, I would always I would also select here, optimize that. That one didn't give you the warning. But same idea, we've cleaned up a few pieces of the database. Since we've been working on this site for three or four weeks now, it's been building up this detritus, which is common. And then with this database cleaner, we clean the database. This is going to speed up your site, make it more efficient. But it could have the detriment. So as I said, make a backup first. And the backup is through duplicator? Through duplicator, yes. Yeah, I did them both. Now, as my note, how often to do this, when to do this, I would say think about doing this quarterly. 
So every three months. More often than that, you're just kind of wasting your time a little bit. You might not be updating the site so much that there's so much left over a cruft. So as time goes on, quarterly, three months, four months, whatever, um, and you check that screen, you'll see, oh, there are these various things that are just kind of hanging around on my site that I don't need. I'm going to make a backup. I'm going to do the cleanup. I'm going to test the site. Works fine. I'm done. If I clean things up, test my site, and suddenly my shopping cart's all haywire, I have to bring back the old site. I have to restore, do the duplicator restore. In that case, like yeah. you just try to find which one's the oldest and then get rid of it, or you need to get rid of it. That's a little bit more effort because what I would do to figure out what the duplicates are here is you would have to go and look at it and see what where is it attached to. You can see it here. If you're viewing your media and you view it by the list, it'll tell you this file is used on that page. And in this case, those two versions of the koala are not... Well, this one says it's being used as a background image. Okay. And that one that says cropped, I never used it. So that could be a way for me to figure out what to crop or what to delete. And in, in this case also, if I delete it from the server, it's gone from the server. But if I've got it in some other backup, I can upload it again. This is reminding you of the optimizing. Thanks. Yes. So we're doing is cleaning the temporary files that mm -hmm. you use that you build up, not what you currently have active. It's a little bit of both. It's the temporary files. Like if I'm working on a on a blog post and I work on it a little bit today and I click save draft. Mm -hmm. Tomorrow I work a little bit more and I click save draft and I do that five times. Right. So I've got five copies of the of that article. Okay. The cleanup will clean them all up except the last two. Okay. The one that's live when you publish it and the last back up. Yes. Actually, by using this code, you clean enough previous and not the current. Exactly. The only way that you would clean up the current one is by going to the tables here, which I do not recommend anyone to do. Yeah. Under the tables is one where you definitely <laughs> delete real things. Exactly. Don't do anything under tables. <laughs> Cross that out. The tables are the are the raw data in your database and to and if you buy the pro version you can look at what that is, but the free one you can't. I'm curious at the moment what's the current price for this? For a single site, one time cost $19.90. So again, it's $20, but 10 cents off makes us buy it. <laughs> Up to five sites, $39.90. Unlimited, $200 to use it on unlimited sites. Now, the reason for this is if I'm a if I'm a website creator and I sell my services to, to clients, and I say I'm also going to optimize your site so they make to make sure it's always fast. Well, I would be buying the unlimited version, $200, so I can then resell my services to the clients. And hopefully recuperate that with a few clients. Mm -hmm. Choose what to clean. Alright, so what we're going to do here is we're going to start to look at WooCommerce. The way I want to do this is I want to make one final 
backup of this site. Because by adding WooCommerce, remember I said we don't want to have two plugins doing the same thing. So what I want to do is, and we'll do it together in just a moment, I want to resurrect a version of the site without an e-commerce built in to start fresh. If I'm trying to add WooCommerce to a site that currently has WP Commerce, there'll probably be conflicts. So together we'll make one more backup of the site. I'll put it in the folder. I'll call it Final WP Commerce. And then together we'll create this site. Now, I want to leave alone the WP Commerce version, and I then want to resurrect a separate copy of No Commerce. I'll show you how to do that. We need two databases. We need two folders. We need two copies. We'll do that together in a moment. So go ahead and do one final backup of the site with WP Commerce. Create this new backup. So this is the usual what you've done. Just make a backup of it. Save those files. In, in general, what we need to do is create a new database on phpMyAdmin. We'll just call it WordPress 2. Then we need to copy the folder of the one with no commerce and put it into the WW folder and start from there. So the way I've named it, you can name it however you want, of course, but after uh, you do the backup, I've saved it in a folder. I put today's date, and I'm also saying it's the final WP e-commerce version, actually with no spaces. Put that into the network folder in case you want a copy of it. That's the final version of WP Commerce. Okay, so after you make a copy of the site, close everything completely. We're going to go through this as if um, we're starting from scratch, but we will see we, we're not starting from scratch because we already have this one site that exists, and there's going to be a conflict unless we do it the right way. So I made a copy, I closed the browser. Open up computer window and let's go to the WAMP folder. So, WW folder inside a WAMP folder. The folder that is currently there is that final version I just ended up with. As long as we have another folder with a different name, um, these can be separate WordPress sites. So, let's make a new folder called WooCommerce, lowercase one word. WooCommerce, you might be right. Okay, so we've got a new folder in the WW folder, in the WAMP folder, called WooCommerce. I'm going to open up the network folder. Let's go back to the network folder and the WordPress folder. And inside of the no commerce folder, I'm going to take those two files 
and put them into the WooCommerce folder. I could have taken the whole folder, but be very careful. If I copy the whole folder and put it into the WooCommerce folder, our path will be localhost slash WooCommerce slash 2017 no commerce slash installer. I want the stuff inside of the no commerce folder, copy that into the WooCommerce folder. Alright, so next I need a separate database. I've got a database for the WP Commerce version of the site. I want to leave that alone. If I, for whatever reason, if I still want to go back to the WP e-commerce version of the site, I'm going to leave it alone in its own folder, in its own database. Well, its own folder is that one with that date, and in its own database is in PHP my admin. So for WooCommerce, it's in its own folder. You can click on the little W to go up to localhost, or I guess you can go directly to PHP my admin. We need a new database. Click the W, go to PHP My Admin directly. There was already a database there that we've been calling WordPress for WP Commerce. We're going to leave it alone. Create a new database. What's a good name for this new database? Anything. Anything you want. WooCommerce. There's a database that has the WP Commerce version of the site. There's a database that will have the WooCommerce version of the site. Call it whatever you want. But not the same thing. If you try to create another database called WordPress, it will tell you it already exists. You could call it WordPress 2. That's fine. Anything you want. Kitty Cat. Remember when we called our database Kitty Cat and it worked? You can call this one Doggy Dog if you want. Yes? When the link is having WordPress. Mm -hmm. We did. We had WordPress, but that's for the yeah. old site. Um, on what? We have WordPress in the PHP My Admin screen, yeah. And then in the WW, we had one called 2017-05-23. And we should not put WordPress on WW.first? You could. You could. This, I'm just, that was the original name from Tuesday. But that, that could be called WordPress. Yeah, that, it'll still work with a different name. I mean, this WordPress is different from that one. Yes, this is a database, and that's a folder. It's different, but they're connected. This WordPress database is being used in the 2017 folder. It's already inside it. Well, it's not automatic. We did it. When we set it up at the beginning of the day, we connected it as always. So I've got a folder WooCommerce. I've got a database WooCommerce. Inside of the WooCommerce folder, we have that installer. So our address in the browser is localhost slash WooCommerce slash installer PHP. So again, this is the thing that I always said. My handout says localhost x slash installer. And the x is what is the folder of the site. In this case, we've got the WooCommerce folder. And inside of it has the installer. looks exactly the same as what we've looked at before, as we've seen before, but this is the version in the WooCommerce folder. Accept the notice, go next, and then we have to be very careful about the next screen here to choose the proper database. When this loads up, it'll say, what's the name of your database? Obviously not the database called WordPress, 
That's the one we used for WP Commerce. We want the brand new database we just created, WooCommerce. User is still root, password is still empty. That's still the same. New database. Make sure it's not WordPress because the action was connect and remove all data from the existing database. It would totally destroy the other site. So as long as we create a, any, a new database, and so we can create 50 databases if we want, WordPress 1, WordPress 99, they will be separate from each other, and every single site will exist separately, in harmony. And you'll be able to go back to each one of them, and they won't conflict. You want to confirm? <coughs> click Test the Database. It should work, but it's always a good idea to click Test Database. Success. And check one more time. The database is now WooCommerce. Click Next. Tells you one more time, Database WooCommerce. This is optional, but I'm going to change the name of the site to Victor's WooCommerce Bakery, just so that it's obvious. Maybe I'll also change the user color. Remember I said we have a color scheme as a user. So we'll have the version of WP Commerce and the, per the version of WooCommerce. Next. This is the same as before. Save permalinks, security cleanup. These are the same login we've used as always. Admin password. No, we don't need to set the Apache rewrite module because it's universal for any, any site that you have. <coughs>
And now the folder is using the What we're doing here is keeping it separate. We're, have, we're going to have one version of one site uh -huh. with WP Commerce, and then have another version with WooCommerce. Two different sites, mm -hmm. two different plugins, so they can conflict.
Okay, so the whole point of what we're doing here is I've got um, in one window right here the site we just set up, localhost WooCommerce. So that's that version from a little while ago. Remember to mute your devices, also your Macs when you throw your trash away, please. Um, and then over here is the version that we finished working with, you know, 10 minutes ago. There's the version in that folder, which is WP Commerce. There's a version here, and this is back to the original theme from the, from the other from the other week. So you see how they're just separated by the address. On the web browser, it's different addresses, and inside of PHP My Admin, it's separate databases, and then in the folder, it's separate folders. So I can have unlimited number of folders, unlimited number of databases, and each one is a separate address. All right, so you should have your site back now. It's localhost slash WooCommerce. If we go back to the dashboard, again, this should be on the WooCommerce link, not the old link. Well, now we're about to add the WooCommerce plugin. The WooCommerce plugin does the same thing as WP Commerce. It would then therefore conflict, so that's why we're kind of starting with a fresh version of the site. Let's go to Plugins, Add New. Search for WooCommerce. It's going to be WooCommerce with that logo from Automatic. Updated one week ago, lots of installations. Go ahead and click Install Now. And then Activate. Yes, and then you want to use the one. Wow. All right, so WooCommerce, uh, we have something very different here now. We have this setup to even to get started off. So this is what, why I was saying that I like WP Commerce to so just get started right away. Install the plugin and technically then just start adding products. Here we have page setup, store locale, shipping and tax, payments. Now those are things we saw with WP Commerce, but notice here it tells you to do these things right away. We can skip it or not. I don't want to skip it because it's things we need to deal with. Uh, so thanks for choosing WooCommerce. This is optional. Shouldn't take too long. Let's click Let's Go. Did you activate the plugin? Yes. It should have been automatic. Well, it's supposed to go automatically, but it's also to run the wizard. Oh. So, I'm not sure. Right away for some people, but they have to run the wizard. 
So that screen should go automatically. If not, they might say, go to the wizard. And we can get to this screen from another screen in a little bit. So I already went one step ahead. I already clicked the let's go. So you, that'll take you one screen ahead. Page setup, store locale, etc. Okay, so your store needs a few essential pages. The following will be created automatically if they do not already exist. So again, WP Commerce did this for us already. It created these placeholder pages to display the shop, the shopping cart, the checkout screen, and my account. Here it's asking you, would you like to do it? And most likely, yes. Once created, these pages can be managed from your admin dashboard on the pages screen. And you can control where they're shown via your menus. Well, we know that. So click Continue. It's creating those pages. This is why we're using a completely separate copy of the site. We already had those shop pages if we were on the other site. So the other site would be would be overridden because we've already got a shop page on the old site. Okay, so here are some things we need to fill in regarding location and such. Locale. So this assumes US. So let's choose US California. We're working with US dollars, pounds, and inches. You can still do this internationally. I could have pretty much every other country as my main locale. That's the same as WP Commerce, but here it kind of pops out at you directly. Continue. Will you be shipping products? Yes or no. Will you be charging sales tax? Yes or no. Let's say for both we will. You will be able to change this later if you're not going to do that. I'm not going to ship physical goods. I'm going to sell music. I'm going to sell services. So you would not want that, but I'll turn them both on. How will you enter your product prices? I will enter prices exclusive, inclusive. We saw that before. Remind me, what's the difference? Exclusive is that the price? That's right. Inclusive means that the price is built into, I mean that the tax is built into the price of the product. $299 means that it already has tax. Exclusive means $299 plus tax. And there is a documentation here. It will be imported automatically for you. You can read more about your taxes here. Uh, this might be interesting for you to look at, so uh, you can right-click that link. I'm going to copy this link into our notes. You want to right-click that open in a new window, whatever your browser says, right click, open in a new window. That'll, that'll be documentation you might want to read at some point. It's, it's a lot to read. Um, this is again what I'm saying regarding WooCommerce. It is a lot more setup. A lot of it will be familiar, but there's a lot here. There's videos and a lot of notes and extra features and then recommendations on do this and that for more control. And what's nice is, well, why do I see this? Why do I see that? What, why doesn't it work? It'll tell you how to fix all of that in the official documentation. So I'm going to save that link into the notes. But here it understands, okay, in California, you're going to charge 7.5%, which is wrong in some places and right in other places. You may need to add or edit rates based on your products or business and can be done from the tax settings screen. We'll look at that later. That's the settings of WooCommerce. When in doubt, speak to an accountant. <laughs> Continue. Okay, payments. Out of the box, we can accept PayPal, a couple of flavors of PayPal, also the BAX system, COD, and Stripe. I never heard of Stripe, so there's a link there. Again, there's a lot of setup, a lot of links, a lot more to read. You can always get back to the wizard elsewhere. I'll show you that a little later. You can always get back to these. Basically, the uh, all of this is at WooCommerce.com. 
downloading it, and support. So any of these speeds, what does this mean? If I just mention it briefly and you want more information, it's going to be at WooCommerce.com. So here, um, let's say we're, we're going to accept uh, payments via PayPal. Continue. So that's our final step. You have these options here. Would you like WooCommerce to check diagnostics, uh, anonymous information, and all of that? Uh, either or doesn't matter, but one reason why I would select no thanks is because then uh, it doesn't um, use up your resources. These diagnostics, it's going to connect from your site back to WordPress.com and transfer data once in a while. I don't know when, I don't know what time, I don't know how much, but it, it will do that. So clicking no thanks will we'll prevent that. From the screen it's also showing uh, watch the videos or get uh, a newsletter and learn more about getting started. You can go back to the main dashboard, you can create a product, you can tweet to everyone saying, hey I'm using I'm using e-commerce, WooCommerce. If you're on the screen I want to check out a little bit more of uh, uh, the learn more about getting started because again if you click on that well that's going to open in its separate um, let's right click that one open in a new window it's going to take over your main window so click on that to open in a right click to open in a new window but then on this screen return to your dashboard So if you open that separate window, you can browse all of these that I would recommend for you to do in order. What did I say? RTFM? Yes. I wouldn't do in I wouldn't do instead, I would do also. Read it and watch the video. Um, either or is fine, but I would do both just to get as much info as possible. Also save a link to the videos. You'll be able to get back to all of these again, but um, I'll just put them all in, in these easy links right here for you to get back to. So, guided tour, how to install it, we're done with that. What are our general settings? What are shipping? How do I set up my emails? So there's lots of videos on all of these, email settings, etc. Getting started again, and how to sell products. There's nine articles there. Anyway, so when I when I get back to the dashboard here. It has the it has some new modules, WooCommerce recent reviews, WooCommerce status, SEO and such. So if you'd like, maybe you can rearrange this a little bit to see your store status as the very first thing. Grab that box and move it up. This one shows things in a different kind of way. WP Commerce showed you your sales and all of that, but this one's a little bit more visual. At a glance, you're going to see well, how many orders are waiting processing, how many are on hold, what orders low in stock, what's out of stock. You get that information from the other plugin too, but here it kind of hits you a little bit faster. Um, 
We have a brand new section of WooCommerce on the left. This one consolidates it a little bit more. Uh, this is where you've got your actual store report. With WP Commerce, it's in a different screen, but here's your orders. Coupons are here. Um, we've got uh, the settings right here. Instead of settings, remember, was under settings for the other plugin. Next to WooCommerce, you've got products. Just browse these, browse these screens a little. Go to WooCommerce orders. Nothing really to look at. We haven't made any orders, but it's all going to be listed here. Um, coupons. Settings. So these settings, which is what we did via that original wizard, is also here. So did anyone also get PayPal could not be installed? Please install manually. Did anyone get that too? Yeah. Okay, we'll look at that in a moment, but this is to add uh, extra features, so we'll get back to that. Uh, but here we've got general products, taxes, everything. So again, there's a lot to look at here. What's confusing about WooCommerce is, let's say I'm looking at products tab in settings. There are also sub tabs that don't look like tabs. Do you see them? Sub tabs. Sub tabs of that tab. It's very easy for people to lose track of. So right now I'm looking at products general, like measurements and such, ratings, enable ratings, and then display. So I've got a whole then subsection here about what am I going to display and how do I display my products by default and what are the sizes of my graphics. Notice these graphic sizes are different than WP Commerce. So if I was uploading my graphics at a certain size for WP Commerce, now they're another size for this. This one is activated crop. A lot of these have a little question mark. Well, what does this mean? But if my picture is 400 by 300, it's going to crop it down to 300 by 300. If I don't want it to crop it and then instead to shrink it, I would change that. Same concept as, as WP Commerce, different words. You'll see that a lot. Same concept in one plugin, different words, different screens. Inventory. I'm just kind of browsing around these. We'll look at it in, in more detail as time goes on, but this is what often happens. A person can lead you and guide you to something, but I'm not always going to be around there to lead you and guide you. You shouldn't be afraid to go to the different screens. What is accounts? What is emails? Maybe don't change anything yet, but look at the screens. Check the help at the top. There's a video for this section. What is account settings? Read the manual. Um, you know, I don't understand what this means, automatically generate, I don't know, but you go to your settings, you read the documentation, you watch a video. Because we're dealing with WAMP, we're dealing with a site that is not on the real internet, this is a safety net, so this is a playground for you to make changes, make mistakes, learn from them, and then apply them to a real site. It is a lot of process and setup of using WAMP or MAMP, but it's a safety net for you to then get your your bearings when you then go to a real account, a real server. So you see there's many more screens, I think. This is why I look at the other plugin first. Yes? In the emails, would that be separate from the regular email account that you might have? Personal. You could. Or would that be connected? Or would that be played be personal with this one? This is the email. Email notifications are sent. So this is not quite maybe what you're thinking. This is this is gonna send an email when there's a new order to this person. So depending on your email account. You can edit that to who is going to get this email when there's a new order, when there's a failed order. The 
just a moment. Does that, that answer the question? Um, no. Yes. I have got the same thing as you are on the Cucumbers. So that would be a communication from them to the email that you want to get. Yeah, pretty much. From your site <laughs> to your designated email. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yes. Who, who take care of the refund? Refund is related to your payment processor. Mm -hmm. So when you initiate, when the user initiates a refund through your website, it'll begin the process through PayPal to then start to reimburse that. And you'll be getting these emails to keep you up to date to what's happening. So once PayPal is fully connected, I don't, I don't want to say it's automated, but once it's connected, it's going to do its thing as best as, much as possible. And if there's problems, it'll let you know. You also have the ability to confirm. It's It should not be that as soon as they click refund, they get a refund. You still have to confirm it, but the system can kind of communicate back and forth. Yes? What about accounts? Uh, on account, do you have um, the sales, uh, taxes, uh, bank payments, anything like that, that you want to deposit? The accounting, uh, part of it will be listed here under orders, uh, but the most detail will also be listed under PayPal, where it's much more secure. If you use PayPal as your processor, credit card processor, they will keep track of all of that for accounting. If you use something else, like Stripe, they would have the full detail of accounting. You get some of it here. But uh, the most important and and uh, sensitive material is on the, is on the payment processors, and you could choose to connect it with QuickBooks and with other things like that. That would be a separate plugin and a separate setup. But you can set it. You can connect it that way too. Yes. Um, where it says put or text, it says powered by refunds. Do you advise keeping that or? Are you where are you seeing that on the main site? Uh, we're at the uh, emails. Okay. Um, that's completely up to you. I personally would remove the WooCommerce part. It's not really necessary for people to know like what software I'm using. Uh, it's just that this is from Victor's Victor's Bakery, so that's customizable to however you want. But I would remove it. We, we don't really need to give them free advertising. There's no harm if you leave it. You've got these base colors. The WooCommerce colors that's editable too. I would set up your template how you want. That's how that's gonna look. So these emails here. These emails are customized, customizable a little bit more than the than the other email. Uh, like a new order, you can click the little gear to see even more how does this fully customize. Again, much more setup, much more power uh, than the other plugin, so you're going to spend more time trying things out, reading the manual. Um, but you have a lot of this control. So if something is, if there's a completed order, well, how does that look like? I can go re, I can go edit that. It says your site title order from order date. So it'll send an email to someone, your Victor's Bakery order from January 1st is complete. These little placeholders, order date, this short code, this special um, 
code here will fill itself in. And under the help screen, it'll tell you here somewhere what all of the possibilities are about what could be automatically filled into these emails. What's the heading, subject? This would be more like if a person bought a downloadable product, this is what the subject and heading would be. These are empty because we, we said we're shipping physical products. So, um, what else? System status, that's just really boring. Technical, sometimes these things are useful. Oh, like here it's saying versions of PHP. This, is, this relates to what version like of GoDaddy we have. So these things are not quite editable. Your store does not support security. These are the plugins that are active and all of that. Extensions. We'll look at one more thing, then we'll take a break. Extensions. Um, here are many, many, many more ways to add more features to WooCommerce. Out of the box, it's very powerful, but if you need more payment methods, you need other ways of marketing and accounting, it's here. I want subscriptions. Let customers subscribe to your products or services and pay on a weekly, monthly, or annual basis. $200. Bookings. Allow customers to book appointments. $250. Membership. I want to set up powerful membership services. 150. These are one-time fees, usually. I want Square. I want to use the really popular Square credit card processor, starting at $79. Powerful search features. Google Analytics. Cart reports. The official WordPress theme. The, the official WooCommerce theme. So here's a theme that's very much built for e-commerce. Uh, for fun, let's say we'll turn that one on, then we'll take a break. Go to Extensions and get the official theme, install it, and we'll take a break. You can check it out, and we'll take a break until 9, and then we'll look a little bit more at uh, WooCommerce. We also got the same not found. <clears throat> That's weird. We'll take a break anyway.